Well, it all started about a year ago for me when I was looking at the possibility of who the first black and mixed race sportsmen were in the county. Now, we knew we had famously Walter Tull at the Cobblers and we had a man called Bertie Clark who played cricket for Northamptonshire. He was from the West Indies, but I couldn't find anything really for Northampton Saints, any black or mixed race players really before the professional era. But it's when you stop looking where you find things and going through some old team photos way back at a reserve team photo from 1902, we saw a photograph of the reserve team and there's a man who really stood out. He was the vice captain and he was the secretary of the A team. He was a man called Frank Anderson and he stood out from that team photo because of his darker complexion. I've been doing some research with Lewis Ludlam. We've been telling the story about Frank Anderson. His father, it seems, was a black American who moved over to Spring Lane where he worked in a tanner's yard. Frank, born in Spring Lane, followed his father into the shoe industry like most of his Saints teammates. I think we can say beyond reasonable doubt that Frank was the first mixed race player to play for this club. But it's during the First World War, after he'd finished playing here at Saints and for the reserves, that things get really interesting. Well, Lewis, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, what happened to Frank Anderson in the First World War. This is his short service paper. This is his attestation papers. He was born in 1878, so actually he was quite old for the army in the First World War. In fact, he lied about his age. We can see he put down he was 30 on his uh, when he signed up uh, to join the British Army. But this is a bit of the Frank Anderson story where we've already known he's a really significant figure as Saints' first uh, mixed-race rugby player. But this is where it becomes an astonishing story, I think, because his short-service uh, papers here tell us which battalion he joined. He didn't join the Northamptonshire Battalion, like many of his teammates here at Saints and elsewhere, but instead he was down in London. So he joined the 17th Middlesex Regiment, the famous footballers' battalion, a battalion set up for professional footballers to join to encourage others to go to war. But the single most famous soldier from the footballers' battalion, Walter Tull. And it cannot be, I find it hard to believe that it's a coincidence that two mixed race men from Northampton at a, town where, at a time when the town was very white, two mixed race sportsmen, in fact, the first from the Cobblers and the first from the Saints, ended up fighting together in the First World War. Uh, and it says here, awarded military medal for bravery in the field. A rare honour uh, for someone like, well, for any soldier, but um, extraordinary, really, that for it to have gone to someone like Frank Anderson. It's, um, yeah, it's awesome to, to sort of understand what he went through and the significance of him being in the army and, and serving alongside someone like Walter Tull, so yeah. Relatively happy ending for Anderson from the First World War, because in 1917, we'll see from his medical records, uh, here on my computer, you can see in November 1917, he was crushed by a falling piece of timber. They were moving on a wagon uh, and it crushed him, broke his ribs. He wasn't badly injured, but it was enough to take him out of the war. He went home and he never had to go back to France. I've obviously been fascinated learning about Frank's story today and there's obviously loads of history on what you can tell us about, but how significant is Frank's story to, to the sort of thing that you're doing? Absolutely, absolutely important. It was great getting a story about a footballer, but for the county as a whole in the town, rugby is featured, isn't it? And um, to have the two stories running parallel is, is so amazing. It, it, it's terribly exciting and gives us loads to look into you know what experiences did frank have yes was it similar to 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 walter we can guess there were similarities um we can work on the status of the two men but we can also work on the fact that they joined the same regiment and that that obviously meant that people played safe putting them in a, a football regiment so that Perhaps it gave them a safer haven being men of colour. So I'm with Peter Hines, uh, headmaster of Spring Lane Primary School, and it's probably safe to presume that Frank 
grew up in this area and went to this school as well. So a time of Black History Month, I know you're, you're working it here. Um, how important do you think someone like Frank is for these students to learn about? I think, it's, I think it's massive, really, really important, very relatable to our children. We're a very, very diverse school. Uh, we've got lots of children from black and ethnic minority backgrounds. Um, so on Friday, when all our children study significant black people um, from the last 100, 200 years, I, th I think having Frank there and know them knowing about Frank and what he achieved is massive, really uh, sends a powerful message to the children about high aspirations, which is what we as a school are trying to achieve for our children. So we're about um, an hour and a half from, from Northampton in Islington and um, some Pancras Cemetery. So um, the sheer size of this place is what really amazed me to start with. I think it's over a million people buried here. Um, there's roads running all through it and it's not just what you can see here, it's here and further back into the bushes there's hundreds of graves as well. Frank's grave isn't actually one of the ones you can see, you have to not just hear from the road, you have to go back about 20 metres into the bushes, through the woods, it's all overgrown, um, it's not well looked after, you probably wouldn't even know there, was a, there were graves down there. Um, apart from that there's not a massive amount of evidence that that, that Frank was, was buried there other than what we've got on the map, which is really sad actually from someone I think is really important to the club, something, someone who um, I feel like we should know more about. I think it's really important you see where Frank ended up, really, and, and I think where he's buried and the manner in which he's buried just sums up how forgotten he is. For me, it's the sadness of the place, really, and the sadness of his story, that he's been forgotten. Although Frank will forever be in this rather overgrown communal grave, he will always be remembered for the important role that he played in the wider game of rugby and in the wider story of Northampton. Yeah, that's his, um, that's his Saints number. It's pretty nice. 160th, so um, yeah, it's an incredible story and I'm really, really lucky we've uncovered it. So Cheers, mate. Thanks for coming down as well. No, you were a pleasure. No, pleasure. it's brilliant to have you. Yeah, that's fantastic, I'll treasure it. Yeah, it's now part of history now, part of the club's history. Obviously, like, it's been fascinating for me to learn about sure. Frank's story yeah. um, and now part of the club's history, what we're, what we're uncovering. How yeah. interesting has it been for you? Wow, it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. I mean, um, I've, I've been sat, I've said before, like to actually sit here and look at the, 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 the ground where, where my great-grandfather played for Northampton Saints. It's just like, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's where it can, I can say it's emotional, really. And it's just, it's just yeah, amazing. You know, I'm so proud, proud to be part of it. You know, yeah. I, I think I think the incredible thing for me as well, until Graham started uncovering all this and really digging to sort yeah. of find out who Frank was, that would have been relatively unknown. It, well, I don't, I don't think it would have been uncovered, Lewis, to be honest. I'm so proud of my great granddad. Mason, he's Mason with his family, really. His family, so, you know, I couldn't, I, I couldn't be any prouder than I am. Yeah. It's brilliant.